The so iced tea is good here. So we're right here in your home lab. Is that what it is? <laughs> Slash laundry room. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as we were switching offices, we just moved offices, I set up a little space to test the angular performance of our liquid crystal mode um, put back onto the OLPC screen. So this is a split screen with the usual liquid crystal mode and we hacked some of the films and things in the OLPC laptop to improve its performance. And we have basically more than doubled the throughput uh, with that. So before it took about a watt to get to about 80 nits and now with that one watt we're almost at 200 nits. The nits is a unit of brightness, sorry, it's not the okay. best name for a unit, but it refers to how bright something is. So we've more than doubled the brightness of the OLPC screen. So we've shown that to Nicholas and John Wadlington and um, yeah. a bunch of the other team that was here last week. And they told you you wanted an XO 1.5, no? Maybe, they're figuring it out. Yeah. As you know, one of them was in the hospital last week, and yeah. so they're sort of okay. working through it, but yeah. we're happy. I think we're going to be there in the middle of June to show them some more yeah. stuff, to figure out what we do to support OLPC from Pixel 2. All right, because, uh, so so what are you doing right there? There's a laser? Oh, laser okay. yeah, there's a laser. I was just measuring the angular uh, performance of it, and then I sort of, you know, got this really bright light here. It's like... A, I had trouble getting this through. This is like two million nits, but it's this is off right now, so I'm not so useful. I guess we can plug it in, but um, I should. But uh, I don't know. Yeah. This is just a very so simple just, lab. We've yeah. got a much better lab. We can invite yeah. you to our lab in California sometime. But the, or better, <laughs> the lab of our manufacturing partner, which is unbelievable. Um, but they they let uh, they let people in with with uh, like. Machines that can record stuff. I mean, not usually. No. I got to go. I spent I spent my Memorial Day weekend in one of the best LCD labs in the world, basically fine tuning our screen. It was fantastic, and all dressed up in a bunny yeah. suit. And Is it better than Google? They have better canteens, or no? Google's Google has good, pretty good food, famously, <laughs> but I think that there's better toys at some of the LCD manufacturing houses because they, they concentrate on hardware. I mean, they have a machine that just peels films off of yeah. off of huge LCD screens, and they yeah. uh, they have just lots and lots of screens. Just an example. I never knew there was such thing as a peeling machine, but there is, and I've used it. Yeah. So what what uh, what are you what are you uh, planning for XO two? XO2. Yeah. I don't know. We, we, we are playing a support role yeah. to one laptop per child, and so we're trying to figure out how we can help them with what we're doing. The idea that we had is basically OLPC was not in the business of supplying components to the IT industry, but as the netbook revolution was happening, it occurred to me that the best way I could help OLPC was by going out and making components to supply to the IT industry, better screens that everybody could use. Because if you can make more of something, you can make it cheaper and everybody can benefit. Yeah. So not just the bottom of the pyramid, but the whole pyramid. The cool thing about the Pixel Chi technology is, you know, poor kids in Africa got it first. It's the classic innovator's dilemma. Clayton Christensen, a professor at Harvard, wrote a book about a decade ago saying, you know, Really, it's amazing. The quality level of a technology increases over time to the point where people can't even tell or see or perceive that quality level. And then a new technology comes along with theoretically lower quality but new functionality, like being able to see it outside, like higher resolution for reading, like what we did for OLPC. So the screens that we now have, these three Qi screens, actually have totally uh, gone beyond the OLPC technology, so there's none of the OLPC technology actually left in the screens. But nonetheless, it was th that was sort of the first step. And it seems that you know now they're sort of this commercial grade quality, people want them, and can you really, do you really need a screen with a million to one contrast ratio or 120% color saturation, you know, shouldn't 100% color saturation be enough? <laughs> things like that, you know, things, maybe there's this collective madness, especially in a laptop screen. You could even see for a large area HDTV screen, but what we've done as an industry 
is essentially taking these big screens and squish them back down and put them on our laptop and say, wow, you can watch movies on them. Well, that's great, and we can watch movies using the 3T screen too, as we showed. But what a lot of us do on our laptop screens is, is read. We, we read email, we respond to email, we read blogs, we read websites, we read. Well, why not make a screen that's, that's also good for reading that you can use indoors and out in any lighting condition? And so we focused on that and that really started, it is, we hope, you know, this innovator's dilemma. And do you think that, uh, that uh, what's called, uh, so the screen is a, should be the main part of the laptop and perhaps the processor is getting a small role? And, well, yeah, that's uh, the thing is, do we really need a gazillion gigahertz and a gazillion, you know, sort of, you know, gigs of RAM? Or is, is, it, is it okay just to have a simple machine where you can read and respond to your email, download videos, watch videos, go to the website? I mean, if you're crunching scientific calculations, that's one thing. But most of us want something that's light that we can carry around that's rugged the batteries last a long time we can we can see indoors and out and things like that so we've focused on that by not fighting the sun you save a lot of power right and in addition uh, one of our goals is to try to get laptop and device makers to undertake the kind of architecture we took it undertook at one laptop per child which was leaving the screen on and the Wi-Fi on with the motherboard off momentarily. So the sort of fast suspend resume architecture. We know how to do that. We shipped a, about a million of them in very yeah. rough numbers from one laptop per child. But still getting the industry to sort of embrace that. Yeah. Hopefully next year. I mean this year it's, it's really given the, the carnage of the economic crisis. Some of the industry is a bit understandably risk averse and so we'll sort of be able to fold that in, we hope, next year. But for this year, at least we can get the screens yeah. into existing, no, essentially existing notebook architectures and get them, you know, to people this fall. And we thought speed was important. So to do, uh, is, is that what you call decon, the decon process? Oh, it's similar yeah. to the decon, yeah, where yeah. you've got some memory. Also, we're slowing down the liquid crystal mode, hopefully next year. There's a lot of work that shows that you can slow it down to 15 hertz, even there were some papers at this SID conference showing one hertz update. One hertz. See, there's an issue usually with the lifetime of the liquid crystal molecules. If you don't flip them, one end of uh, an LCD molecule is, I'm looking for a, sorry, this is a piece yeah. of normal PC thing. One end is a slight anode, the other is a slight cathode. And so they, they reorient in an applied field, but they, they need a constant AC charge ac across them. And if you um, don't do that, Basically, little bits of the liquid crystal molecule fall off into the alignment layers, and the liquid crystal becomes liquid, no longer liquid crystal, and it goes black if you don't flip them quickly enough over time. And so that's why most liquid crystal and uh, displays are updated at 30 or 60 hertz, which we can do with ours. But we're working on research to lower that to 15 hertz and even lower. And there's some research suggesting, you know, much lower. Indeed, there are so-called bistable liquid crystal modes right now that is yeah. also something in our roadmap over time. So if you, if, you, if you lower the hertz by half, it saves the battery half or? That's right. Yeah. And if you lower the voltage by half, it saves four times the energy because power is voltage, t sorry, <laughs> power <laughs> is capacitance times frequency times voltage squared. All right. And so if you lower the thing in half, you save, you know, you save four times the power. So to do the decon, you have to talk with Intel and ARM and all these people? Or is there other kind of people, the screen people, who need to get that working? The motherboard people? Who, who um, it, the, it's, real, it's a trivial thing to do in the, in the timing control yeah. or relatively. So there's a yeah. type A, there's mosquitoes um, sometimes. Uh, there, to do that, it's really working primarily with the ODM to to do the architecture. That said, um, various CPU makers are working on alternative uh, low-power architectures for their CPUs that maybe do the same thing inside of them. I must go with you, yeah. John. You can't leave. We have a okay. meeting. We're going. So, uh, just last thing, so you're shipping, the first, the first batch will be without all these decon things, right? That's right. So the first batch is a run-in change, and by that, basically, we're asking the manufacturers to plug in our screen instead of their standard screen. 
to okay. existing electronics. Yeah. We'd like them to mod the electronics to move the, the power consumption much lower, but for the first batch yeah. this year. And so yeah. next year we believe that we can yeah. you know, really get the huge battery life increases and for this yeah. year you can save two three yeah. watts because for this batch they have uh, they have nine cell batteries for intel processors and there's arm processors that have eight hours so for now it might be okay until you do the decon that will improve much more much well, more next year john you really can't leave okay sorry, sorry.